Good morning, church. Today I'll be reading uh, through Habakkuk. There's a little, th uh, three little themes that I want to pick up from, from the book of Habakkuk. Now I'll start reading from the NIV, Habakkuk 1, from verse 2 down to 4. Habakkuk's complaint. How long, O oh Lord, must I call for help? But you don't listen. Or cry to you but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralysed. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. And what Habakkuk's doing, he's saying, what's this all about? Lord, you're not doing what you promised. And he complains against the Lord. He says, I cry for you, but you don't help. And you're not saving. Where are you? The Lord answers Habakkuk. Look at the nations and watch. And be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. So that's in verse five. So God answers Habakkuk and everything changes. Why? Because Habakkuk has heard the Lord. That's why I'm saying it is so important for us to pray and hear God for ourselves because something changes in our spirit when we hear from God. So Habakkuk is crying out, why Lord, why Lord, why Lord? The Lord answers him and I love the way God answers him. He says, I'm going to do something amazing in your day, but you're not going to believe it even though I've told you. <laughs> How many times do, do we hear or read the Bible or hear from God and we think, well, how? How? Was that you, Lord? Will you? Now, something changes, though, when we do hear from God. There's been times, I'm sure, in your life, as well as things I've experienced, where I've heard God. Situations haven't changed, but I know they will because God has spoken. Now, Habakkuk then moves from revelation, hearing from God is revelation. So he's had revelation that God is going to do something in his lifetime. That's what God said to him. I will do something in your, where is it? Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I'm going to do something in your days that you wouldn't believe, even if you were told. So in his lifetime, God is going to do something. Later on in Habakkuk 3, Habakkuk now prays a prayer of faith. O oh Lord, this is Habakkuk 3 verse 2. I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O oh Lord. Renew them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. So we've had a revelation of who God is. We've come to know him as our personal saviour. We know him. He's revealed himself to us. And our prayer is, well, Lord, I've heard of your fame. You've declared in your word who you are and what are you like. And as Habakkuk prayed, my prayer is this. In my day, in my time, I've heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Now in my day, in this world today, make yourself known. I stand in awe of your deeds. Make yourself known. Reveal to the world who you are. Renew them, your promises, who you declare to be. Renew them. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. It's a prayer of revival that Habakkuk prays. He's experienced God. He wants everyone else to experience God. But something else happens. You see, he still had to live in the contradiction of what he'd heard for quite some time. Eventually, God does move exactly how he promised. And that was the invasion of the Babylonians. I won't go into that. But during that time, he comes to a place of solidarity in spirit. He knows God is faithful. Why? Because he's heard him. And he says, this is the contradiction that he's living in. I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. 
Yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. And here it is. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no fruit, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stall, yet I will rejoice. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. Though the contradiction of God's promises are still there, they're coming. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord while I wait. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on to the heights. So he starts off complaining to God. He then hears from God a promise that God says you wouldn't even believe. He then goes on as God's promise permeates through his spirit. He heard God. He was a prophet. He heard God. We're God's people. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. We have revelation. And it renews us from the inside out. Then we pray, God move. Let them hear. Let them know your voice, just like I have. And while we wait for God to move, we're strengthened in him as we rejoice in him, as we celebrate in him. And he makes us steadfast once again. Let me pray. Father, I want to thank you that you are who you reveal yourself to be through your word. Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. And our prayer is, Lord, for us to know you, to hear you, to stand firm, to be a people who rejoice always, even when we go through the hard times. But Lord, we also pray that this glorious gospel that you've revealed to us will be revealed to those who don't yet know you. That you would show yourself in our day, in our time, that you would make yourself known just as you have historically and through the ages. Let your kingdom come. Amen. I've enjoyed being with you today and I will see you all on Sunday. Goodbye for now.